My name is Bernard Ashwanden. At Publishing Smarter, one of the things we do is create videos, like this one, to help people learn how to use their software tools better. This video is going to show you how to work with Adobe FrameMaker 11 and Ditta. I'm going to start off with a couple of the basics. And to begin with, I want you to be aware that you can switch between two primary views. One is the XML view, and the other, the view that's seen here, is the WYSIWYG view. I'm just going to switch to the XML view, and the only real change you'll see at this point is a couple of menu options. At the top of the screen, you'll see that there's fewer menu options available in the XML view. I'm going to switch back over to the WYSIWYG view, though, for the next chunk of work. The WYSIWYG view shows far more options in the menu bar, including one that reads DITA. There's several options available under this menu, and more of them become available if you actually have a file open. But to get started, I'm going to choose New DITA File. There are many options when creating a new DITA file, but for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to create a new topic. This is a default topic. It has a couple of placeholder content chunks, such as enter title here. It's showing up in the authoring view right now, and there's several different things that can be done to change it. But before I do that, let me close the file and just show you a different way to create a new topic. Another approach is to click the File menu. Under File, click New. Then choose XML. The new XML dialog has several choices, including DITA. Many DITA documents, including maps and topics, are available. After selecting Topic, I'm going to click on OK. A default topic is created, and again, placeholder text is visible. We're also in the authoring workspace right now. That's great if you're working with unstructured content, but when you're working with XML or with DITA, there's better ways to do your job. From the drop-down, I'm going to choose XML Structured in order to hide away things like the Paragraph Catalog and show tools that are a little more geared towards working with XML and DITA. Now I can see the Structure view. This shows me an entire hierarchy of all of the elements. It also shows me the exact location where my insertion point is at present. I'm going to show a few more things, and in order to do so, I'm going to click on the View menu. Two types of element boundaries can be shown. The first option shows the element boundaries as a set of square brackets. The square brackets are nice because they can quickly show you where an element starts or ends, but they don't necessarily give you a lot of descriptive information. This time I'll choose element boundaries as tags. Now I can see a lot more information, including where my topic begins, or where my title begins, or where the short desk begins, and the same with where elements such as the title end. This is a really nice way to work with your content when you're first getting started with structure. However, everything that I'm seeing is currently in the WYSIWYG view. Remember that we can also switch to a code view so that we can see all of the XML. In the code view, I can see all of the markup. I also have a tree, which is similar to the structure view, and it shows me the hierarchy of the elements. Depending on how you prefer to work with your code or with your WYSIWYG environment, you can toggle back and forth as needed. I like working in the code view every so often when I have to tweak content, when I want to make a really specific and really quick change. But for my day-to-day -day writing, the WYSIWYG view is really great. Here I've switched back, and this is the view that I'd recommend you use when you're first getting started. 